Good evening, everybody. And it's a very cold day, so I decided today to make roast meal, roast dinner. Okay, so a welcome to our cooking demonstration or healthy food, Wallara Healthy Food Recipe Club. The recipes I've got today all come from this book, The Optimal Diet. And if you can read the top bit, I'm not sure whether you can. It says recipes to reverse and prevent obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and heart disease. So if you stick to the, all the recipes here, you probably will improve all those things. So the first recipe I'm going to talk about is a lentil roast. Okay, and I'm just going to get to do, have a quick look at the recipe. Hang on, let it adjust. Right. No. It's just going to stay quieted out. I'm okay. Sorry. I sent it all to most of you online. Okay, the lentil roast basically is pretty straightforward. We have two cans of um, brown lentils. You can boil your own and have about just a little bit more than two cups. Okay, so I've rinsed it and drained it. So I've just put it in the container. Pretty straightforward. This is pecan nuts, which three quarter cup, which I made into a ground meal. And what I'm going to do is put all the ingredients in the order it comes in. One in the three quarter cup of soy milk. If you don't like soy milk, you can use any other milk. You can use almond milk if you like, or oat milk. It'll probably be just the same. It's one cup. And okay. And one cup of onions. I've chopped it as fine as I can. It's not too bad if you don't have it too cooked fine because it, it gets cooked anyway. Okay. One tablespoon brags. Have you all, do you get brags? If you can't get brags, I get cucumin soy sauce. Okay. It's naturally brewed so you can use that. Um, it's quite difficult to get brags now. I don't know what's happened to all the shops. Um, they seem to have taken the one tablespoon brags. So I'm just going to put it tablespoon oops. it's like a soy sauce basically um, half a teaspoon sage I don't have sage I couldn't find sage today so what I've got is uh, Italian dressing so I'm just putting about a half a teaspoon I know that's my baby's <laughs> uh, and half a teaspoon of salt and oh sorry and corn flakes are crushed. And it's one and a half cups of crushed corn flakes, which actually comes to about three cups of corn flakes. So by the time you crush it, it becomes yeah, you know, one and a half cups because all the air gets displaced. So you just mix it up. Pretty straightforward. Um, I cooked it the other day with wheat bix. Um, and of course, it's wheat bix is not gluten free. And it tasted pretty good. Um, you just crush the wheat bix and put it in. Same thing, one and a half cups. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. We have a question about whether you can substitute the pecan nuts for cashew nuts. Uh, yes, you can. I would actually use walnuts instead of cashew, nut, uh, cashew nuts because cashew nuts are very, very rich. And walnuts are actually very good for you. Walnuts and pecan nuts are pretty good nuts and they're supposed to have quite high omega-3s.
That's basically what you do. Just spread it out and bake it in an oven at about 175, 180 degrees Celsius for one hour. Okay, I've actually made one just this afternoon. So that's what it looks uncooked. You can see the onions. Okay. This is what it looks cooked. Can you see? Okay. I'll just it lifts off quite nicely and you can just cut it. This lifts quite evenly. This one. Okay, so it cuts easily. I'm not very tidy today, but so basically you can serve that up in a piece. And I normally serve it up with a mushroom gravy, which is what I'm gonna make next. I just need all these things out of the way. Okay, mushroom gravy. So you can use it in a pot on the stove or you can use it in an electric pan like this. Okay, I'm going to need to saute the garlic. I've got one clove of garlic minced. Just leave that there. Because it's a healthy one, we're not using any oil to cook it with. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of water and then my garlic. I just mince the garlic, or rather I buy minced garlic like ready-made. And Chop onions. And mushrooms. So just saute that for a little while. On mushrooms sometimes they weep a little bit so you get more water so you don't actually need too much water for this stage We have a question here about, uh, is it better with cornflakes or wheat bix? Um, I haven't tasted the one with the cornflakes, but um, the cornflakes one cuts better. You know, so you can actually have it like, um, cut a piece as a patty to put on your bread for a bun, the burger. But it tastes really good. I mean, you just taste a lot of the very nice um, lentils. I've actually given it to my granddaughter to eat. She's 
13 months. And what did she say, Andrew? Yummy. <laughs> so obviously it's good. And she had the one with the wheat fix. <laughs> and with this sauce. And she had it with the mushroom sauce like this. So now that the mushrooms are a little bit nice and soft, what I'm going to do is add all the other ingredients. So it's one tablespoon of bread. So I'm not sure whether I have enough bread in there or not. Mm. Would you believe? Just right. One tablespoon of bread. And it says four cups of soy milk. So that's equivalent to one liter. So it makes quite a lot of sauce. You can, like the other time when I made the sauce with cashew nuts, you could use that as a sauce for your, as a gravy instead of this. And you see, this is the mushrooms with the, with the milk put in. And I have to put salt to taste. So I'm just going to put a little bit of salt. And I mean a little bit of salt because Bragg's is quite salty. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three tablespoons of whole wheat flour. And you know how if you, when you put flour in, they all get lumpy. So what you do is put it in like that and use a whisk to whisk it. Obviously you can't use a, this kind of whisk on a non-stick pan. So if it's a non-stick pan, you might have to use a, a plastic whisk. If you keep whisking it, then you won't get lumps. We just have a question about the uh, brags. What is it? Exactly. It's a sauce. sauce or... <laughs> Hang on. Andrew's going to read out what it says in the bottle. All purpose seasoning from soy protein. It's a type of soy sauce, but it's a bit more healthier than your normal soy sauce. So if you don't have brags, I would use Kickman's naturally brewed one. So basically, this is what you do, and it's just thickening up, and that's your sauce, your gravy, I should say. Uh, Diane mentioned she uses tamari. Tamari, yeah, you can use tamari if you like. If you use to tamari, you know exactly how much, how strong the sauce is. So you might just have to, you know, adjust according to what you're making for your quantity. Okay, this is quite getting nice and thick. Your gravy. I like putting something green in my dishes, so I'm just going to put some spinach leaves in. It's all done. So it's thick enough for your gravy for your food. A bit of green extra added in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can put it in a container.
Can you see it's sort of, as I'm pouring out, you can see how it's got nice and thick. If you've got a problem with gluten, um, I'd suggest you can use corn flour uh, to thicken it. Make sure your corn flour is proper corn flour, not wheat and corn flour. So you have to be careful because sometimes they do sell corn flour and it's actually a wheat product. So that's your sauce. So just to confirm, the thing that uh, thickened it was the whole wheat flour that you put in? Yes. That's the one which thickens it. Okay, I'm just going to take this away somewhere. Okay. The next dish I'm going to do is scallop potatoes. So these are, this is vegan. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Get a tray, spray some oil. came out. Any questions? Any other questions? I'm going to so basically with the scalloped potatoes I've sliced the potatoes okay they're about the half a centimeter thick and I actually, because I cut it earlier, I soaked it in water. So you notice that it hasn't gone black. So if you cut potatoes quite early and prepare early, it does go black unless, or it darkens anyway. But if you don't want it to go darkening, you just put soak it in water. I've also left the skin on. Okay. So just basically, You see my potatoes, a bit of onion on it. More potatoes. Are they sending me to thick, are they? Oh, I'll have to cook it for a bit longer then. It's meant to be about quarter inch, which is half a centimeter thick. Okay. So. Uh, just a question about uh, uh, somebody, Eva said she recently bought potatoes which are crunchy. Where do you find the mushy ones? And what are you using here? Oh, these are just wa washed potatoes from Woolies, and I can't remember what brand it is, what kind of potato it is. I think it's just normal potatoes, not anything specific. It's crunchy, it's not mushy. It, it, it all depends how you cook it. When you've cooked it a lot, then it goes really soft. You don't want it too mushy anyway. Okay, and I need to put a sauce with it. And that's what I'm going to do now. Basically, take this. Let me see. Let me check it. Three cups of water. I'm just going to put. Just one cup first because I found that the coconuts doesn't get really um, finely mushed if there's too much water. So I'll do one cup and then add the second two cups later. And 
what is it, one, three cups of water, one cup of cashew nuts, or you can use almonds, but make sure they're blanched almonds so they don't have the skin on them. One cup. Two cloves garlic. And let me see, let me find all that. Half a cup onion and half a cup red peppers. So that's half and half. I just chop it, chop it loosely. You don't have to chop it really fine because you're going to put it in the blender. Um, and three tablespoons of yeast. This is the yeast flakes, nutritional yeast flakes. And one it's slightly different from the savory yeast flakes, but it tastes the same and it gives you the same amount of um, um, nourishment and B, a lot of B, vitamin B, Bs in it, but they've also added B12. One tablespoon of lemon juice. It, a bit of salt, just cut down the salt if you don't want salt, if you've got high blood pressure or something like that. Um, yep. Helps if you get the right power station on and And I just need to add another two cups of water. So that would be 500 mils. Okay. That's probably all nicely mixed anyway. And you just basically just pour it on. I was a bit worried because but it didn't have anything colored on top but the capsicum gives you a bit of color. So it's quite nice. So that's what it looks like. So when it's baked, you will have a bit of nice pink color on it. So it looks quite pretty. Question about uh, vitamin B12 and baking it. Does the vitamin B12 get affected by the baking process? No, it doesn't. B12 is one of those fairly strong um, vitamins which doesn't get damaged by heat. And it's something that your body needs in small amounts, but it needs it, okay? It's very, very important that you get your B12 intake you can get them from some of the soy milk products where it's been added on. Um, okay, that's my one which I made earlier on. And if you use a knife, you can see the potato has been done. If you find it's not done, you can always cook it a bit longer because it all depends how well you slice your potatoes. I obviously sliced it a lot wider than Andrew's, than the recipe said. <laughs> obviously, don't know my centimeters. Okay. And what I was thinking is, as an extra thing, because you want it as a full meal, we just have a zucchini, baked zucchini, and. Pretty straightforward. You have the same thing, another pan, preferably flat if you want. And 
bit of spray. Uh, if you don't have a spray, just put a bit of oil on it, okay? So basically, if you can, you can do it this way, cut it lengthwise in half, and then that way, and sideways. If you're like me, I find it hard to cut lengthwise sometimes. So I cut it this way first, and then I do the... And basically, all you have to do is, this is Herbamet. It's a mixture of different salts in it. Basically, it has sea salt, vegetable, and herbs, like celery, leek, cress, cress onion, chives, parsley, lavage, garlic, basil, marjoram, rosemary, thyme, kelp, and certified organic. So basically, you just, Sprinkle some on the surface. This is the cut surface, as you can see. And a bit of oregano. And Kai, there's just a question about your knife. Uh, somebody thought it looked quite cool. <laughs> Well, you know what happens when some people... <laughs> when some people try to break something that's icy with the end of a sharp knife, the, the end of the sharp knife ends up in the ice. Okay. And because I use the herbal mat, I actually don't need to put salt because there's some salt in there. And I'm just going to put garlic powder. Just to let you know, with garlic powder, if you... Keep it in the fridge, it doesn't get all bluggy and get stuck together. Okay? And don't put too much because it is pretty strong. And basically, that's it. You cover it with a foil and bake it for 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees centigrade. <laughs> I'll just show you one I've done. So the dark areas are where the, the, the herbs are. And like I said, I put quite a few herbs and the herb in there. Okay. So basically, you know, means right? And you get a piece of If you don't want to cut it in piece like that, you can. That's your roast. Doesn't look that pretty, so it's it. If you cover it with the sauce, it looks a little bit better. And like I said, if you put a bit of green in it, the sauce looks quite nice. And then a bit of your potato bake. There's scallop potatoes on the side. And your zucchini. Okay. Dinner tonight. <laughs>